Do you have any idea how many times I've been asked at a wedding, how much is that thing you're holding in your hands? Basically, it's clients trying to determine how profitable a photography business can be. And when I ask them, take a guess, they come up with the usual, yeah, I know that stuff's expensive, probably 10 grand. Now, I mean, really. So is photography dead in South Africa? The short answer is yes. And the long answer, well, let me explain. Three years ago, a photographer like Michelle and I were booking about 120 to 140 jobs a year. Now that's about 10 a month, sometimes more. In the last few months, that shrunk down to probably two to three jobs a month. Now we are talking about photography here, so just keep that in mind. So while editing this, I thought I'd just step in and quickly say something that a lot of people are probably gonna question. In saying that our business has dropped so much, I just want you to understand that in actual fact, we have excelled so much on Google for our photography business and the markets that we reach, which is events photography and weddings and engagement shoots and matric farewells. For our area, if you Google us, we actually rank first on Google and we're always on the first page. So our SEOs are 100% intact and we have had zero business shift in terms of online presence. So this is 100% market related for our area and South Africa. Now you're probably sitting on the other side going, but hey, I make it as a photographer. And am I saying that no one can make it as a photographer? No, that's not what I'm saying. But just hear me out. If you're trying to make a full-time living and a full-fledged business out of just photography, it's probably not going to work. Now I know this is something you probably don't want to hear and I know I'm going to be barking up the wrong tree for a lot of people. But unfortunately, this is the truth. One of the biggest reasons for what I'm going to tell you is not just you and your perception of your photography business, but the perception that clients have over you. Be honest, as a photographer, you don't believe it's okay to charge someone for the latest Mac or MacBook or the latest Windows PC or the latest 85mm 1.4 lens. You just don't believe it's right for you to charge the correct price for your industry because you believe your client should pay for that. Now I can go on all day about different industries, about what doctors charge and what dentists charge and what your grocery store charges for a loaf of bread with a markup of profit just so that they can afford a section that says bakery and make it pleasing for you to come there. So you are being overcharged in each industry, but it's market related and it's business related. And your photography business probably isn't doing that. Lately, the price of camera gear in South Africa has gone through the roof. It is completely normal to drop 50 to 65,000 Rand on a camera body. No questions asked. You don't go to a wedding with one, you go to a wedding with two. You're already 130,000 Rand in. The list goes on lenses, bags, batteries. Now a lot of people go, oh, but I mean, come on, it's, it's a camera bag. A camera bag can run you seven grand. Basically what I'm saying is, it's completely easy for you as a photographer to have half a million rands worth of gear. Now, a lot of people are saying, but yeah, once you've got the gear, you've got the gear, the rest is just profit. Well, not exactly. Unfortunately, gear ages. Gear also has wear and tear. Things need to be replaced. And if you're wondering how expensive that is, I had a follow focus motor replaced inside a lens two and a half years ago that cost seven and a half thousand rand. There are not many one man businesses that have half a million to a million rands worth of gear, including your computers at home, that have such an ongoing cost, whether it be websites, AdWords, the list goes on. Basically, as a photographer, what you are then doing is you're pretty much saying to people, well, can you try and help me pay off my gear, but I'm gonna give you the rest of my life and my time for free. So what's the point of this video? You're probably wondering, why did you make this video a year just to put photographers down? And how are you as a photographer actually making it? Because Michelle and I are full-time photographers. However, we do a lot of content on platforms like Firework where we get paid, as well as YouTube. Now, a lot of people have questioned me and said, but hey, you're posting to YouTube. Why don't you do one of your client's jobs before you post to YouTube? Now, to get into that topic, as a client, if you book a photographer, you generally know you would wait, depending on the criteria or the photographer, you have a time zone of one to six weeks or whatever it may be to book your job. As a photographer, I understand that. I always try and keep a week or two open in there where I'm allowed to create content for myself that I can put on YouTube. Now, if you're saying, well, why would you put it on YouTube? I mean, it's just content. To be honest, I have booked more jobs of playing around on YouTube than I probably have from spending 5,000 Rand a month on Google AdWords. And it's the honest truth. 
people get to see me as a person and they see the content that I create. They create some form of personal relationship with Michelle and I. So the big question is, should you as a photographer continue with this in South Africa in 2020? And if you are looking at just doing photography solely and this is what your passion is, I would say keep it as a passion and do it as a hobby. Don't do it full time because your business will not make it. Unfortunately, with the price of gear, with the price of computers, and in saying that, the price of gear that you are going to buy as a photographer, you are going to need a really high spec computer. To obtain all of these things and meet the requirements to run a business that has these costs, doing photography solely is probably not going to work. Yes, I know there's a lot of people that are going in the comments are going to break that keyboard and say, well, I'll make it. I understand that and I'm not saying it happens to everyone. But unfortunately, the person that's watching this that has got this doubt in their mind is not that everyone that's going to make it. You're probably going to want to find something to sweeten the deal, as they say. Now, if you want to know what I mean, Michelle and I started creating content for brands and YouTube and Firework and things like that a few years back. We started seeing the shift in the market where brands and businesses were more interested in doing video. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's a lie. Do me a favor, when last have you scrolled through someone's 56 photos of a birthday party on Facebook, but you wouldn't mind watching a one minute video? You see where I'm going with this. So, sweetening the deal doesn't just have to be video. It could be website design. You may be someone that actually does a lot of real estate photography. And you could do real estate photography for a lot of B&Bs in the area, and you could actually design their website for them and implement some form of one-stop shop to kind of help that client. Now, I'm not telling you to lower your photography price just to build the website. Charge the same price. However, the guy that's got a BNB, if he can get the photography from the same person, the chances are he's gonna give you that job rather than outsourcing both. So if you're gonna go in the comments and you're gonna start asking the question of what price should I charge for a wedding? There is no correct answer. However, I can tell you that if you're charging 3,000 Rand for a wedding, you're pretty much going to the casino and instead of going to the 20 Rand machine to spend your 100 bucks, you go to the 5 cent machine and you throw it into the slots. At the end of the day, both people are still gonna lose 100 bucks. So you're just losing over a longer period of time by charging a lower price. So no, it's not gonna help you. You need to stick to your price. In South Africa, the market has changed completely for photography. And if you're gonna drop your price, all you're doing is you're gonna be working at that price for the rest of your life. And your photography business will never succeed because whether you have a WordPress website or a website through Wix or your Sony camera, their prices are not gonna go down. They do not care if you can't afford it. So I know this is probably a video that seemed very negative to you. And it's not the message that I'm trying to convey. I'm trying to give you some advice that I'm glad we decided to make a shift two years ago to add something to our photography business rather than just sit there and wait to see what happens. The other question you have is, why would you make this video and why would you make it so blunt? Well, I've been teaching photography for quite a few years. I've been doing a lot of tutorials and a lot of workshops and giving a lot of advice, whether it be on Facebook or WhatsApp and people just messaging me, whether it be about gear or helping people over WhatsApp while they are literally at a shoot. It's in my best interest to just want to help. And unfortunately, I don't want to see the photography industry keep taking the dive that it has. So if you are watching this and you have decided to make that decision and push a little harder this year, add something to your photography business. I mean, at the end of the day, almost every single photographer's camera can take video. So I hope this helps you guys and I, and I wish you the best of luck in 2020. It's gonna be an epic year and thanks for watching this far. I really do appreciate it. If you've got any comments, drop them below, hit the video, give the video a like and uh, we'll see you on the next video. So wherever you are in the world, have a good day, good evening, good night, goodbye.